This is Harry Jaffa Boxing Social in partnership with Empire Fight Store. We're in Bijou in Sheffield here for the GBM Sports Media Lunch. Delighted to be joined by a very colourful, very enthusiastic, the brilliant Stevie Levy. How are you? In good mood? I'm good, thank you. Media lunch is their food then, yeah. <laughs> Media lunch for food for us. I don't know about you, um, but um, it's great to see you. Good Christmas, good New Year? Yeah, I was alright, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good Christmas, good New Year. Glad to be back in routine now, though. You know what I mean? A lot of bit of routine. Last out, good performance by yourself. Um, tricky South boy you came up against. We hadn't had a chance to speak about your last fight. Just saw your reflection on that. Yeah, I was really happy with how I performed. I've always been shitting myself about Southpaws. I'm not going to lie, I've never lied about it. So I was very, very nervous. And obviously I fought at a heavier weight as well. And I knew Becky was tough, but I feel that I boxed really well. I'm really happy with that. And I've conquered my fear of Southpaws. And I'm so excited for an Orthodox fight next. <laughs> she was in with big opponents before you. Yeah, Jordan Barker-Paw, so she came to fight. Um, you know, see, it wasn't, it wasn't any rollover. It was a good fight for you. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was a rollover at all. I think every fight's a learning fight, isn't it? And that was exactly what I needed at the time. Um, and she's a lovely woman as well. Um, I really enjoyed the fight. I actually really, really enjoyed it. So um, I can't wait for the next one. You could have ended it uh, in the fifth or the sixth. Yeah, you were going for, for the knockout. Is that what you were sort of looking for towards the end of the fight? Um, someone did actually say to my manager after the fourth round, if she knocks around the fifth, I'll give her 500 quid. So I got the go-ahead to try, and I did try. But I think knockouts come when you're not looking for them. So I probably made a mistake there. But I still think it got the crowd going. You know, round five and round six, I still say three-minute rounds. I'd have had a few knockouts by now, but it is what it is, isn't it? Is that what you're advocating for, the three-minute rounds? I mean, there's loads of talk going on. Arguably, on one side, two minutes, it makes the female fights more exciting. Three minutes, though, you get more action. So you're in favour of three minute rounds for women's sport? Yeah, definitely. It pisses me off when we only get two. Like We train as hard as the men. I say it all the time, we give birth. Like There's nothing men can do that we can't. Do you know what I mean? It's the other way around, so it does annoy me. I know they say like two minute rounds gets more action, but now nah, I think three minute rounds you'll see more action. You'll, you'll see more knockouts, and everyone likes a knockout, don't they? And, um, and if you don't get knockouts, you're getting more boxing to watch, aren't you? We're getting more time in the ring, which is what we train for, so I'm all for three minute rounds. I am, definitely, yeah. February 10th. Did you get much of a Christmas and New Year because it's so close to, to that sort of festive period? I always make time for food. I always pull out. What did you eat? Uh, I didn't go too crazy. I've, I've learned not to binge. I, I used to binge quite a bit. I've, I blew up like two stone after the Barcelona fight. Do you know what I mean? It makes your life harder getting it down again. So I think I finally learned that the food ain't going to fucking go nowhere. You don't need to eat it all at once. Do you know what I mean? So I have balanced it quite well over Christmas. I've got a bit of weight to lose, but I'm well on track, so I'm not worried about that at all. Obviously still early on in your career, but you've got such a big, big following. You know, you're you know, so loved, I think, within the boxing, not only the boxing fans, but the boxing media as well. You know, how much do you appreciate the fans? Because there was a lot that travelled up for your last fight. How much do you appreciate that? Oh, I'm so, so lucky. Do you know what? No matter where I fought in the country, I always get a good crowd. And I'm so grateful because it's not just paying for tickets. They're paying for fuel. They're paying for hotels and drinks and whatever. So literally, you can't explain how grateful you are. And it makes it so much better when you've got a crowd there cheering you on. Like, it really does. Um, and yeah, I've always been so lucky. Even when people are like three and a half hour drives, they still turn up. Um, yeah, I'm so lucky. Really lucky, isn't I? We're here for the GBM um yeah, GBM Media Lunch, let's say. Um, yeah, you've been on GBM a few few times. Where can this brand go, do you reckon? Because you're one of their stable fighters, it seems. You've been on their fights a few times now. So how big can you see this platform going? Yeah, I'm very lucky. Obviously, David's friends busy, and they are, they are a, um, what's the word, state up. Promote, they're a promotion based up north. Obviously, I don't live up north, but David does, so I'm lucky to be a part of it because there ain't really nothing around where I live. And the production of these shows, like, you know, I'm not dissing small hall shows, but you do get small hall shows. I think these are already a league above them. So, um, yeah, the, the production's amazing. All the people are amazing. The atmosphere, they, the, the, the crowd, even from like the first fight on their shows, is like rammed. You don't get that on a lot of small hall shows. So I can see GBM really, really going, going up. Up in the you know up in the game as they say. I'm not just saying lick their ass because I'm here. Like I do generally mean it. Like literally. Like I'm really happy fighting on these shows. So I mean we are going to push for a title fight next, but you know on a bigger platform. But it's not to say I won't be happy staying on this platform for a couple more fights. But you know I'm, I'm on my ninth pro fight now. I've got a good record and I'm, I'm ready for a big one. So that's not to say these aren't good enough. But I am going to hopefully go after this. That's what I was going to ask though. That, that is the plan next to go for titles. What sort of titles are we looking towards? My dream's always been the Commonwealth title. That's, I've always watched. Why the Commonwealth? I just like the belt. It's pretty. It's rainbow <laughs> colours, isn't it? Like, you know, that's just a pretty belt, isn't it? And I just thought, why rush your career and jump to world if you can like earn your way up the rankings? But the thing is, the the it's not as many women as there is men. So I could potentially fight for a world title next. That's how big it is, like in women's boxing. Like, and and I would take it with both hands. I would grab any opportunity after this. Ten rounder, any belt, I want it definitely. 
we have to talk about the man as well. He hasn't attended. I don't think Dave Allen is here today at all. Um, he is back out. What? How is he feeling? He looks fantastic. Um, so yeah, Dave Allen is returning to the ring. The reason he's not here says it all. He, Dave Allen is out fucking running. Can you believe it? He is out in the streets running. The White Rhino, yeah. So that tells you how committed he is to these upcoming fights he's going to have. And I'm so excited for him. I've never seen him like this. I've known him like, what, three, four years? He's in the best shape mentally, physically. Like I think he's going to be dangerous this year. But what is the reason for the comeback, though? Because, you know, it's obviously not for money. It's not for that. Is it for just for him? Is it because his mental health, he's recent interviews is changed yeah he's so much happier in himself now what is the reason for for the comeback you know he's he's settled down now he's got a missus he's got a kid he's got a team he's got close friends he knows he can trust and i think that's just so much motivation and i think the fact he retired and never knowing if he could have like you know gone that bit further he, ne he never put he admits he never put the effort into training he sort of he, he used his talent and skill but he never worked hard enough and now he's working hard that mix of talent and skill who knows where he could go i think he just he knows he's he's, only, he's what 30 so he, he this will be his last chance now so he, he needs to do it right or he'll look back and he'll regret it and like he's, he's got you know, boxers don't always do it for the money but there's some big money to be made for heavyweights out there he's got a family now why not give it one more go and secure a good life for him do you know what I mean so no I definitely I agree with that I mean I've uh, met Dave a few times he works a lot with the amateur scene as well so he's obviously been involved with the sport involved with yourself as well so he's never really distanced himself completely from the sport so it is good to see him back in the ring and you know, in a recent interview he said he wants to fight for the British is that a possibility you think for him I've got a feeling I'm manifesting it's a definite, yeah. Like the thing is, you've got to you've got to be in love with boxing for it to make it work. It has to be your whole life. And obviously, a few things happened, and, he, and I think he fell out of love with boxing. So he had a break, and sometimes you need that reset, recharge, get your shit together. And he's definitely done that. Um, and yeah, I, 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 do you know what? I love Fabio. I've been friends with Fabio for years. But um, you know, I'm I'm thinking David after this this next fight he's got, I can see him fighting Fabio for the British. I really can. I can see it happening. Yeah. Um, a gentleman who has never stopped mentioning Dave Allen's name is Alan the Savage Babich. What do you make of him? Um, I used to really like him. Then I see an interview, he said so much shit about David. He's like my best friend. I'm like, I don't like him anymore. But no, I like him. He's a big character. He's a good fighter. But I can't. David is never going to come down below heavyweight. It's not going to happen. So unless he comes up to heavyweight, I can't really see that fight happening, if I'm honest. And I don't think I don't think Babich would dare come up to heavyweight and fight David. Not a good David. He's fit David. On the ball, David. Pff, can't see it happening. Stevie, any last words before I let you go? I feel like I want to sing you a song, but... Um, you can sing me a song if you want. No, I won't. Everyone will leave the building. We'll save that for later. Uh, can I just say a big shout-out to my sponsors, please? I'm so very lucky. People don't understand how much you need sponsors. Like, they just don't realise how much we need them. And I've got a company called Dedicated Care that have been with me for years now. And they're the most amazing, kind people based in Kings Lynn. And they don't need my advertising. They do it because they want to support me. Um, so, yeah, shout-out to Dedicated Care. Happy Motor Finance. They're my newest sponsor. They're now jumping on board. They reckon they've been big fans of me and, like, Team Rhino. And they seem so excited to be able to help me, which just means the world. It shows how good people they are. So, big shout to Happy Motor Finance. A uh, new one, which was now about to be announced, uh, my very close friend, uh, Ebony Bridges, aka the Blonde Bomber, the IBF bantamweight champion of the world, is um, could sponsor me and Nicola for our next fight. What a fucking woman, do you know what I mean? Like, we'll go in more depth. We haven't done a post about it yet, but the fact that she said she's now in a position where she knows you know, how hard it is to get to where she is and she's in a position she can help us and wants to help us. What a woman, do you know what I mean? Wanting to help two other women in their boxing careers. So, um, Ebony Bridges, yeah, I'm going to be proud to have her on my shorts. Yeah, I mean, just on that as well, um, how much of an influence is Ebony to you? Because you are good friends. Um, yeah, you know, to have someone like Ebony, who's at, well, at the top, let's say, of, of women's boxing at the moment, a huge, huge performance last out in Leeds. How important or how appreciative are you having such a, a woman like Ebony in your corner? Yeah, like I've said to her, I've been speaking to her for a couple of years now. The first year was spent all over, like, just on inbox on social media before she even come to England. And the thing with her is because her profile's so big, you, you don't want to come across as arse slicky, keep banging on about her, do you know what I mean? But I'm at the point, we've been speak, we, we speak near enough every day. We have been for a long, long time. She's a, she's a big part of my life, to be honest. Like, um, we've got a lot in common, and I know the real Ebony that not everyone else gets to see. So when you hear people chatting shit about you, you think, for fuck's sake, you ain't got a clue what a woman she is. Do you know what I mean? That really winds you up, but boy, did she shut that fucking shit going O'Connell up. Oh, my God. But anyway, that's another story. 
story. Yeah, she's, you know, you, you sound typical saying she's such an inspiration, but she is. She's left her home country of Australia, moved over to England on her own. Do you know what I mean? She's, she's nailed down and she's literally shut up all the people who doubted she could box and fight and thought she got where she is for her looks. But she's stunning as well. And she, she's a clever, she's a businesswoman, she's a proper fighter. And I'd say she's a proper friend. And the fact she wants to help out other women just speaks a lot about her. She's a proper, proper woman, Ebony is. And I'm very grateful to have her in my life. Not just in the boxing scene, but in my personal life as well. She's a very, very good friend, a very good person. So, um, yeah. Stevie, we look forward to February 10th. We've got one more sponsor. Go on. Yeah, just to say, um, Team Rhino have got their um, sponsor, Watches of Whitby. They like, like support the whole of Team Rhino. They do what they say on the tin. They sell watches in Whitby. So big shout out to Watches of Whitby. And also, I've got some spaces left on my kit. If there's any companies out there be interested in sponsoring, I cannot express how much we need the help. Like It's not just buying your kit, paying for like travelling, for sparring. My boxing uh, licence renewals come through, staying out. It's like, it's crazy. You lose money. You don't make it in our situation. So if any companies want to get on board, Team Rhino, Super Stevie Squad, Give me a DM. Don't be pervy because I won't open it. Ha! No, I'm joking. No, I'm not joking. Oh my god, did you hear that? Ha! Um, but yeah, no, I'll be so grateful. I'm all plastered on my kit, plastered on the socials. So yeah, let me know. I really appreciate it. And like I say, big shout out to all the other people supporting me on my journey and all the fans. I'm very, very grateful. Definitely get involved in Stevie Levy's career. We look forward to February 10th. Good to speak to Fox and Social.